right, Brother Fred? Uh, today I want to take a fresh look at faith. Uh, it's certainly going in a different direction than I was expecting to. <laughs> this morning the Lord began to reveal some things to to us, and so we want to talk about these things, looking at faith. And the title of the message is Faith Brings Order Out of Chaos. And the basic idea behind it is that there are events in your life. Uh, and how are those events related? There's so many people that uh, feel like their world is just full of chaos and that they have no control over anything and they have no hope and they are oppressed and depressed. And, uh, but that's not true for Christians and who believers, those people who believe, because what we're going to talk about today is that there are uh, the events in your life can be related. You can, and the thing that relates them, they, even though they seem to be unrelated in the natural, the thing that relates them is your faith. And your faith brings the reality of how things relate to each other, how things work in God's kingdom. And so faith is a very important thing, and we can't even please God if we don't have faith, if we're not operating in, in faith. And so here's the basic idea that what you desire is important to God. And because it's important, he has given you faith so that you can affect uh, your outcome and your life so that he put you in charge of having a life that's worth living. Mm -hmm. that, that's exciting. We have a life that is worth living. There's so so many people in the world that their life is chaotic and and uh, they don't feel like it's worth living and as a matter of fact some of them just give up uh, but you are in charge of a life that is worth living and if you need heaven to come down on earth you can bring it down and change things because god cares about you he cares about your desires and he has given you faith to make things happen, even to bring things from heaven onto the earth. And if something bad has happened in your life, you can reverse it Amen. with faith. Amen. So Amen. today, uh, we're going to look at how we can use faith to make all things work together for our good. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what we need to know. We need to know that if this happens over here, uh, how can I make something happen over here and it's going to be the faith that, that connects these events so we'll be giving some examples and and uh, showing you how mm -hmm. this operates but uh, it's a very practical a very simple message today but things relate and the way we relate these events is by our faith we know what happens and so when you pray and someone is healed uh you pray for their healing and they're healed then the faith connects it and you know that it's because you prayed with faith that they were healed. Hallelujah. We even saw Hallelujah. a couple of things last, uh, last night, the mm -hmm. uh, tumor disappeared. Uh, we had, uh, we were contacted about a woman who was about to have a baby, but it was uh, turned the wrong way. Uh, we prayed and the baby turned the right Woo! way. Hallelujah. You, you know, they were connecting events. We, we pray over mm -hmm. here, this thing happens, and it's faith that connects them. Now, the, most people, they, they would say, well, that's just circumstantial evidence, or that's just uh, coincidence. coincidence. No, no yeah. it's not coincidence. It's because you're a believer, it's your faith that connects the events. And you know when you pray, how to pray, that will cause a desired result over here. God cares about your desires and he has given you a way to manifest them in your life. And we see this in Psalm 37 verses four and five. It says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. And that's verse four. And then verse five says, commit your way to him. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Well, that, that word trust right there is related to faith. So we have to commit our life to him. We have to trust him. So he cares about your desires. And then it says uh, he will bring it to pass. Well, that's code for he's going to empower you. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, sometimes uh, 
people mm -hmm. God wants their their desires to come about, but they don't do anything about it. They just sit on their hands and don't do anything about it, and it doesn't happen. But what I'm saying is that God empowers you to bring these things to pass. Amen. And Amen. so I want you to read these two verses again. Okay. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And again, Hallelujah. I want you to no, no, even though that says he will bring it to pass, I want you to know that you have a responsibility. Amen. You have a part, a part in it. And we see this again in Romans 8, 28. This is a verse that I, I was thinking about this morning, and I was talking with Sherry, and this is when the Lord began to give life to this message. I, I was thinking about Romans 28, how God works. 8, 28. Or 828, that he makes all things work together for your good. If you love him and are called according to his purpose. So read this verse, Sherry. Okay, Romans 828. We know that God causes all things to work together, are connected for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay. You know, and that's what faith really does. It connects the dots. Yeah. It connects the events. It puts together the plan of God uh, for you. Hallelujah. And a good example of this is something that I shared. I may have shared it uh, in the last few days with you. Uh, but years ago, we had to repair work done on our car. And uh, they, I felt like they overcharged us $300 because I paid for a new part. And when I got it home, it turned out to be a restored part. And so uh, Sherry and I used, uh, stood on uh, Proverbs 6, uh, 30 and 31. It says, if the thief be caught, uh, then he'll have to restore it sevenfold. So we asked for a sevenfold return on what was stolen from us. And then in a few days, a man called us uh, called me from Canada, wanted me to do some work, and he wanted to pay me some money for it. And I, it was a simple job. I did it, and he sent me a check for $2,100. Now, most people would just look at that and say, well, those are two unrelated events. Uh, you ask for sevenfold return on $300, and a man sends you from Canada, another nation, sends you $2,100. But the Holy Spirit said to me when that check was coming, uh, he said, that Check mm -hmm. is your sevenfold return on the $300 that you lost. And so faith, see, it was faith that connected the two events. And I knew that they uh, were connected and that I could find the thief. Well, whenever I mm -hmm. find the thief, I can ask for a sevenfold return. So I began to do that in my life and Sherry's life, of course. And then we've done it in other people's lives. And we've taught people. You need to be... Uh, if, if the devil steals money from you, you need to uh, be asking for the sevenfold return Amen. from Amen. Uh, Amen. Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verses 30 and 31. And so that was the connecting of the dots. And that's what faith does. It connects the dots. Otherwise, we think, well, just the random events. We're just in a, a living a life with just random events are going on. And some of them are good and some of them are bad. And we don't have any control or any charge. No, your prayer makes a big difference. But it may, it may not be prayer all the time. Sometimes it may you, you need to decree some things or to proclaim some things. A, a lot of different ways. You need to hear from the Holy Spirit what to do in each situation. So this this message today is to look at things from a big picture perspective. Look at how things connect in your life. Uh, look at it from the perspective, from God's perspective. See, you're seated in heavenly places with him. So look at things from his perspective and you want to see how things connect. When I do this, what happens over here? When I pray this way, what happens over there? Well, when I make a decree, what happens over there? So you want to see how things connect, and that's all about faith. And, and uh, so the thing about faith, it says here in, in Romans we, that God was going to work everything out, but then we, we see also that he gives you faith. Yes. Oh, and it's with the faith. Hallelujah. You can you have a part 
in bringing things into existence uh, so that your desires are manifested. Now, I hope this is an encouraging message to you today, as it has been to me, uh, since the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me and sharing these ideas mm -hmm. with me, that God works things out, but he gives you faith to do some things about it so you can see the big picture, how things operate. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sherry? Well, I just want to give the <clears throat> title again, because we've got uh, some people who've just joined us. And the, and the title of this message today is Faith Brings Order Out of Chaos. And I know that every single one of us, we've had times that have been chaotic, times that have been uh, depressing and discouraging, uh, disappointing. But faith brings order out of chaos. So, so. We're, we're not just living in a place where they're just balls bouncing around us uh, chaotically and, and we don't know when something good or something bad is going to happen. You can bring your desires into manifestation in your life if you have faith that's and, right. and operate in faith because that's God's plan for you. And, and I want you to, to see in uh, uh, what faith is. Uh, God gives us faith. We see that in uh, Romans mm -hmm. 12, 3. Read that verse, please. Okay, Romans 12, 3. God has allotted to each one of us a measure of faith. Okay, so we each have, so God gave us the faith. You couldn't be born again. See, you're all here because you're born again. You you believe in Jesus Christ. He's your Lord and Savior. And, but he gave you the faith so that you could do that. Uh, we, we are saved by grace through faith. And if you didn't have his grace, but he he's, oh, he's so gracious. He gave us faith and he gave us the grace so we could be saved. And so he's given us, so we, he's given all of us faith. So we're all equal. He gave all of us a measure of faith, but it's a measure of faith and we can increase it over our lifetime. Hallelujah. And that's Hallelujah. important. And that's the reason we have these messages and uh, that we're meeting on Saturdays is that we can all in grow in faith because we need to exercise our faith Amen. and operate in faith and understand how faith operates. Okay. So God gives you the faith. And then I want to look at a couple of uh, verses on the definition of faith, just to look at, because Basically, this message is a fresh look at faith. Okay, Sherry, read. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 1. Okay. And this is out of the Passion uh, Translation. Now, faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. Okay. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Okay. Woo, so, hallelujah. so there are these events that are happening out here and, and he uses words here about reality that, that we don't, in the natural, we don't see these two events. We pray over here and this, uh, some person is healed or, or we receive a financial blessing, but it's the faith that connects the two. And that's our evidence that proves that the two things are connected. Uh, it also brings it into reality that this prayer brought this result, this financial result, a financial blessing. And so it connects them. And even though in the natural you can't see it, it's your faith that causes them to be connected. And you know that when you pray, your faith is going to be effective and it's going to manifest what you're praying for. And, and that's the point of this. We need to know how our faith operates and how it connects the events between our, between our prayer or it's not always praying. Uh, it might be we actually steward our money, how we steward our money. We need to uh, be uh, giving to the Lord. We need to be helping the, the people in need. And so when we do those things and then we receive this financial blessing out here, we know that those it's connected. It's connected and it's the faith that has connected it because we have stewarded our money. We've been a good steward of our money and then we've received a financial blessing. Now there's a lot of people uh, that love the Lord but they don't want to be a good steward of their money. And they just, they are constantly in uh, chaos about finances. Uh, right, sometimes right. they're up, sometimes they're down and, and uh, they don't have enough. And, and so they don't recognize 
that what you do, how you steward your money is going to affect your financial situation. Ooh, but uh, faith yeah. will connect the points, will connect these dots so that when you steward things, you're going to get the results that you want, even if it uh, requires heaven to invade earth and bring you a financial blessing. See, that's what faith will do for you. Now let's look at faith from another uh, translation. translation. Uh, this is from the message. It says the fu fundamental faith. It's still Hebrews 11.1. 1. Still 11.1. 1. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Oh, well, I've got to pause. I've got to pause here and just focus on that. You can have a life worth living. See, there's a lot of people out there that are living chaotically under all kinds of stress, and all kinds of problems, but you can live a life worth living. That's what it is. If you live by faith and you can connect the, connect the dots and the events. Okay. It's right. our, it's our handle on what we cannot see. The act of faith is what distinguishes our ancestors, sets them apart above the crowd. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, your fathers of faith, the fathers of our faith, see, they have been, they're distinguished from others. It, it's like uh, humans distinguished from uh, apes. Uh, you can see the difference between humans and apes, or you can see the difference between faith the fathers of our faith and those people who didn't have faith because they were prospered. They were in health. They, mm -hmm. they uh, had descendants that possessed nations, uh, possessed uh, desolate cities. And, and so they did incredible things. That's uh, whether it's uh, hundreds of years ago or even in our lifetime, the uh, previous generations, the fathers of our faith have lived a life worth living. They've impacted people's lives. And what distinguished them from so many people out in the world was the faith that they had, the relationship with the, that they had with the Lord. Amen. Oh, amen, amen. Faith. We, we need to just remind ourselves yes. of faith and how, how it operates. Glory to God. Now, uh, there, there's another important thing that I want to point out in, and af after faith now, is that he God also gives us love because you remember up there in Romans eight twenty eight he said if we love him if we mm -hmm. love him then all things are going he's going to cause all things to work to our good and, and so I want to go over to uh, uh, Romans five five and, and he says he gives us love mm -hmm. so he gives us faith and he gives us love. And that's not the end of the story, but we'll go ahead and read Romans 5, 5, if you would, Sherry, please. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who was given to all of us. See, it starts with the word hope, which is kind of like faith. Uh, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. And so... But our hope, see, is not going to, we're not going to be ashamed of our, of our hope because, in other words, we're going to receive what we're hoping for because we have the love. I mean, well, we have the faith. And, and now it's going to be that God gives us the love. Love. It, God gives us faith. God gives us love. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And there are three that remain. What are those three? Every one of you know faith, hope, and love. Hallelujah. And we need all three of those. And it says that those three, they're, they will never go away. They were, they're eternal. They're eternal forces. Faith is a force. Hope is a force. Love is a force. When I say force, let the force be with you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. That means that all of you are Jedi. All of you are powerful warriors because you have faith and you've got hope and you've got love. Woo! Hallelujah. And then I like Galatians 5, 6. I want to read Galatians 5, 6 out of a couple of different versions because it says that faith and love 
faith and love work together. Oh, amen. Let us read these two. Galatians 5, 6. <clears throat> this is from the Passion Translation. When you're joined, here again, we hear, we, we're, we're talking about connecting things and bringing things together, events together. When you're joined to the anointed one, who is Jesus Christ, circumcision and religious obligations can benefit you nothing. Nothing. Woo. All that matters now is living in the faith that works and expresses itself through love. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, there's a lot of people that say they love, but they are really just loving people who look like them and talk like them and smell like smell them. Like them and uh, vote the way they uh, love. But God's love loves the unlovely. Amen. People that are different than we are. Okay, mm -hmm. I wanted to read this other verse too. Galatians 5, 6. This is out of the voice. Here's the thing. In Jesus, the anointed one, whether you are circumcised or not, makes no difference. What makes a difference is the faith, whoo, hallelujah, that's energized by love. Oh, hallelujah. God gives us faith. God gives us love. And it's love that energizes faith. And so we can say we have a lot of faith, but if we don't have love, our mm -hmm. faith is not going to have any get up and go. Yeah, it's right? not going to be productive. It's not going to be productive. It's important for us to have both faith and love, but God gives us both of them. And remember, God works all things out to our good. If we love, love, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, we have love. Hallelujah. So love is important right there. But it's about, we have a part in working mm -hmm. all things out together to our good together. So working the mm -hmm, dot, mm -hmm. connecting the dots. Okay. And so there's a passage. I, I'm not going to read it, uh, have Sherry read it to you, but uh, it's Genesis 22. And it's a story that you're all familiar with. And God had uh, given a Abraham a son. His name was Isaac. And he promised him all of these great things that were going to be through Isaac and all the descendants of Abraham, that they were going to be like the stars of the sky and the sand in the sea, uh, along the sea. And so they're just more than you could number. And, and so his um, vision for the future, Abraham's vision for the future was all wrapped up in Isaac. Mm -hmm. That's where his descendants were going to come from. And then one day God told him to go and sacrifice Isaac. Uh, we'll go out to a mountain, to mountain. And, and I'll show you where. So uh, Abraham and Isaac, they went off and they had uh, the wood, they had the uh, uh, fire, and they had took some servants with them, and, and then they went out. And I'm, again, I'm in Genesis 22, and, and Abraham makes this statement of faith, an incredible statement, because he could connect the dots. Now, let me read that. It's okay. verse 5. Then Abraham said to his young men, or his servants, stay here with the donkey. And I and the boy will go up over there and we will worship and return unto you. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, 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 we. We. See, he's a father of our faith. That, that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, Romans says he's the father of our faith. And so he's making a statement of faith because he's connecting the dots. He, he sees something that God is going to do. And he says, the boy and I, we're going to go over there. We're going to worship God. So he, he put worship in there. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He thought worship was really important. He didn't say sacrifice. He said, whoa, we're going to go worship the Lord. We're going to go worship. So he, he, saw, he saw how worship is important. And he's connecting it because he's a father of our mm. faith. He's connecting mm. it with faith. Mm. That it's going to give him the result that he wants. Okay. And then uh, as they go, as Isaac and uh, uh, Abraham go up the mountain, uh, they have the fire, they have the wood, uh, but they don't have the sacrifice. They and have they, the knife. And they have the knife, but, but uh, Isaac begins to wonder what's going on. So let's hear what Isaac said. My father, he said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, we have the fire and the wood, 
But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And so the two men walked on together. Okay. This is connecting people. This is connecting. Ooh, hallelujah. And you know the story as well as I do that. Also, Abraham was connecting what was happening with the reality of what God was doing. What God was Ooh, doing. What God was doing. See, that, that's what faith is. It, does. Mm, mm, it mm. connects what we're doing here with what God, God is, doing. is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what this message is about. Mm, that's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> And so you know that God did provide a ram in the thorns. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and so the, the sacrifice was made. And uh, then uh, they came back. They went up there. They worshiped. They sacrificed. Uh, uh, God provided the sacrifice. God revealed himself as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Awesome. And, and mm -hmm. then after they had worshiped him, and I, I imagine they were so, <laughs> Isaac, don't you know, he was excited. Amen. <laughs> he didn't have to die. He didn't have to be sacrificed. Let me sing a little song right here. All right. Jehovah Jireh, your provider, his grace is sufficient for you, for you. For you, Jehovah Jireh, your provider, his grace is sufficient for you. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Oh, hallelujah. His grace is sufficient Amen. for us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But see, Abraham was seeing the bigger picture. He was seeing a bigger picture. He he saw that God was going to provide himself a lamb. And then we see it here in Isaiah 53, I believe, verse 7, uh, that I, I, Isaiah began to see that God was offering a sacrifice. It says in Isaiah 53, 7, he was oppressed and afflicted. This is about Jesus. Mm. Yet he did not open his mouth. <laughs> like a lamb that was being led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers. So he did not open his mouth. Okay. So there Isaiah's prophesying same thing that, that Abraham had seen back there in Genesis 22. Now Isaiah is picking amen, it up again amen, and seeing it in Isaiah 53, because men of faith and women of faith, people of faith, they begin to connect the dots. And they see how this thing happens and it causes this thing over here to happen. And because Abraham went up to the mountain with Isaac and willing to offer his vision for the future, offer it to Jesus, uh, I mean, offer it as a sacrifice that God himself was going to provide the lamb. Amen. And so Isaiah Amen. picks it up again and, and begins to prophesy the same thing because Abraham had seen Jesus' day and he had rejoiced in it. Now we see it over here in Peter, 1 Peter 1, verse 18. Read these. That, then, now this is looking back to the cross. 1 <clears throat> Peter 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things, like silver or gold, but your fruit, your fruitful way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood, precious blood, as of for the lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So here it hallelujah. is all through the Bible, all through the Bible. And, and now we can look back on it and it's pretty easy for us to see we don't have a, have to have a lot of faith to look back and see how all of those things connected how what abraham and isaac did up there on the mountain and then what isaiah saw that was going to do and then what jesus did on the cross and even peter so we connect all of those things and it's our faith we believe that they were all related all of those uh, mm -hmm. things that we've just read and talked about by faith we Okay, but that's looking backwards now. And now I want to apply it to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm bringing this message to a conclusion then. 
And I want to say basically the same thing I did to start with, and, and that is God cares about your desires. He wants to give you, he wants to work things out uh, for your good. And he wants to give you what you want, what you desire. Amen. And, amen. and uh, he empowers you to do that with his faith and his love that he gives you. Hallelujah. So you're, you don't have the faith of a, some kind of an alien or something. You've got the faith of God. God pours his well, faith hallelujah, in you. Hallelujah. His love in you. He pours his hope into you. And, and, and you can begin to see how things operate. And, and now look into the future. Look into where you are today and where you want to go. And he wants to give you. The, that's the desires that you have. He wants to give you those desires. And, and it says all things are going to work together. Uh, but I, I want you to know that he has given you faith and love so that you can cause all things to work together. And you can live a life worth, worth living. living. Oh, I love that phrase. You can, and if something bad has happened to you, and something bad has happened to all of us, but we can reverse it with faith. We Amen. can reverse Amen. it. Oh, hallelujah. That's what faith is. God wants you to have the desires of your heart. And if something has gone astray, you can correct things. You can bring yes. restoration because Jesus came to restore all, all things. things. So in this study today, we've talked about how you can work all things together for your good. Well, you're not just out here in a chaotic world. Your world is not chaotic. You are in charge. He's put you in charge mm. of a life mm. worth living. Amen. And you do it with faith and love. And by knowing God's nature and God's principles that are presented in his word, you study those words, you be close to him, you be sensitive to him. He will show you things, uh, show you things mm, to, to come. come. Uh, he sent the Holy Spirit to you to show you things to come. And He, the Holy Spirit will help you know how to pray. And you, you can pray. Now, see, I set this in contrast to even some things that I've done. Uh, I, I prayed for years for my son who was on drugs and nothing happened because I didn't have God's perspective on things. But when I went to the courts of heaven and asked for a verdict mm -hmm. and a, a sentence that I could bring on the head of the enemy, he gave me Isaiah 49 verses 24 and 25. And, and it said, though your son be a legal captive, I will deliver him. And so they had, uh, they arrested him for, with eight years of pri of charges that he would have to serve in prison, eight, eight years, years in prison, and and but this what the Lord told me was that even though he'd be a legal captive, I will deliver him. And so I I went to my son and I told him that I said, uh, this is these are the verses that God has given me that you will be delivered. Though you are a legal captive, you will be delivered. And uh, he did serve the uh, some time in jail, just work things out. But he has not served a day in prison. And he's been clean from drugs for six years now. He has a good job. He's been a, a faithful worker for uh, for years. And, and now his uh, wife also for six years has been free from drugs. And, and they are model citizens in the, in the community. And so... God did deliver them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Connect Hallelujah. the dots. So it, it was totally different than me just praying uh, ineffectively. Uh, when you find, when you see a big picture, you get God's perspective on things. See how things connect. I need to prophesy these words, and this is what's going to happen. He's going to be delivered from drugs. It's important Hallelujah. that you be close enough to God that you can hear by the Spirit of God, what His will is, and that you do that, and you will connect the dots, and your faith will be effective to make your life worth living. I love Hallelujah. it. I love it. Amen. 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 You know, it says in the book of James that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. And let's look at that phrase, avails much. What does that really mean? It means that that you get the results uh, that you're praying for. It means that you are being profitable. It means that you're being productive uh, for the kingdom of God. 
and that you are connecting the dots. You are uh, here. You've you're been praying for something, and then all, and then it uh, manifests. Uh, that is connecting the dots, and that's what faith. That's what faith does. And so the Lord has given us all things. Remember what it says in Peter. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already given you the land. He's already, listen to me, he's already given you your healing. He's already given you the money that you need to pay your bills. Hallelujah. He's already given you all of those things. And by faith, we connect the dots. We bring it forth through faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, I, I love this message. And I don't know about you. And I've heard about faith, you know, and I've studied about faith. But like Brother Fred said, this is a, a fresh perspective. This is prime rib today. Hallelujah. And if you know some people that were not here and have not heard this message, uh, then you go and you tell, you tell them about this message today that they can live a life worth living. That's right. And, and it's just simply by being in touch with the Lord, be sensitive to him, do what he tells you to do, obey him, be quick to obey him and know that your prayers will be effective, that your actions will be effective, and that you can expect the desired results. It's God's will Amen. for you to have your desires Hallelujah. met and manifested in this earth. In the name of Jesus, 